Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I am Coach Castle, and today we have another Red Pill of Resistance Exercise Series video for you. Today we'll be going over glute training. I know a lot of you waited a long time to hear this video, how to properly train your butt. Well, today we're going to be going over the myths, the misconceptions, what's true, what's not true, the proper resistance curve, how to train it properly, which one exercise is the perfect one and what to do if you don't have that available, you know, the alternatives. So, if you guys are ready to get into it, this is another Red Pill of Resistance exercise series, and this is the glutes. And just a reminder, everyone, if the information helps you, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. It does help a lot with the algorithm grow, and I'd like to help a lot of other people. Now, with that being said, let's get into the video, take that Red Pill, and see how to properly Train your glutes. The glutes are comprised of three individual muscles. The gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the gluteus minimus. The muscle that is of most significance to the bodybuilder, or the person pursuing physique development, is the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus extends the hip joint. What that means is that it opens the hip joint, or it pulls the femur downwards and back. This pushing down and back action moves our upper body from a seated or squatted position upward, or when we're stepping onto a step or platform, the gluteus also propels us forward when we are walking or running. Now in resistance exercise, the word extension, whether referring to hip extension, elbow extension, or knee extension, means increasing the angle of a joint. The primary function of the gluteus maximus is hip extension, which means to increase the angle of the joint between the femur and the torso. However, unlike elbow extension and knee extension, in which one of the two levers is clearly more mobile than the other, hip extension can be done with either of the two levers being the more mobile, while the other is more stationary. Now, when a person is performing a stiff-legged or straight-legged deadlift, the femur is the more stable lever, and the torso is the more mobile lever. Now, deadlifts would likely to be included in most people's list of good glute exercises, but the strain on the erector spinal and on the spine itself is excessive and unnecessary. The amount of weight necessary to adequately challenge the glutes with this exercise is far beyond what is reasonable for the erector spinal, and it also is a compromised movement as the resistance curve is not optimum. If a person uses a weight that is safe for the back, it will likely be insignificant for the glutes. And if a person uses a weight that is productive for the glutes, it might be excessive for the erector spinal and spine. Now, there is no advantage in terms of better gluteal development by combining the loading of the gluteus, the erector spinal, and the quadriceps simultaneously. Each of these three muscle groups can be worked as well or better with dedicated exercise as compared with the compound exercises, squats, or leg press. A person is doing a squat. Both levers are moving. The torso is slightly less mobile, and the femurs are more mobile, but both are moving. The gluteus don't know which lever is moving and which is stable. The muscle merely performs its task of opening the joint or increasing its angle. Even though these exercises all look very different, the same action is occurring in each of them in terms of hip extension and gluteal contraction. There are other factors aside from the simple hip extension that determine which exercise is best for the gluteus maximus. Now these include range of motion, effective lever length, not shortened by the secondary lever, the resistance curve, bilateral versus unilateral, and stability. Doing back lunges is a fairly good method of working the glutes. The torso is held upright, so the erector spinal is not loaded and the spine is not compressed. Each side's glutes is worked unilaterally. Back lunges can be performed while holding a handrail for added stability or while holding a pair of dumbbells for added resistance. Another very good exercise for the gluteus is step-ups, onto a high step. Once again, you can choose to hold additional hand weights or not, or even wear a weighted vest, perhaps. Now, glute bridges are very popular these days, but glute bridges have two compromised components. They have a limited range of motion. The first 20% of the glute's range of motion is not even used, and it is late phase loaded instead of early phase loaded. As you can see by the protractor I've laid over the exercise above, the range of motion for this exercise is still only about 45 degrees. 
The range of motion when using the glute extension machine is about 80 degrees. We'll bring that up later. It should be noted that this is not a comfortable exercise and getting the barbell on top of the pelvis is very cumbersome. Now let's talk about hip extensions in a multi-hip machine. This produces the same gluteal or hip extension movement as occurs during squats, but with a much better resistance curve. Now the end of the range of motion still encounters opposing resistance where the barbell squat does not. And, generally speaking, you will encounter far greater resistance throughout the entire movement, whereas you do not experience this during a squat due to reciprocal intervention. In addition, there is no weight being placed upon the shoulders, so no load is placed on the erector spinal, nor on the intervertebrate discs of the spine. Now this exercise allows a much greater motion than the most of the other glute exercises, a full 80 degrees range of motion. It also avoids unnecessarily loading the lower back, as would happen with squats or with deadlifts. Also, by attaching the resistance to the distal end of the femur, the quadriceps and the knee are no longer a limiting factor, and the tibia, as a secondary lever to the glutes, does not reduce the movement arm or the effective length of the femur. So, the full range of the femur length is being used. Hi uh, guys, I hope you liked the video. Coach Castle back here again, just reminding you all, please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you found the video helpful. I hope that again, this is really going to help you guys with your glute training. If you have any questions, please just leave them in the comments or email me directly. And uh, good luck everyone. Everyone have a great day. Yes, you can. Let's get building that body and mind the way that you want it to be built.